Hey, it's Wendy from The Nomadic Vegan, and I have just returned home. I'm here in my apartment in Lisbon. I uh, literally walked in the door about five minutes ago, and the first thing I wanted to do as soon as I got home was to tell you about this very long journey that I've been on. Actually, it wasn't really that long in the grand scheme of things, but it felt longer than other journeys that I've been on, and I'll explain why. It was only 39 days, but the difference was that it was a journey that I made entirely on foot. So I started in France in a little village called Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, which is in the Pyrenees Mountains. It's basically right across the border from Spain. And so on my first day, I walked across the Pyrenees Mountains and into Spain. And then over the next 38 days, I walked a total of 799 kilometers uh, until I got to the city of Santiago de Compostela in the far west of Spain. And so along this journey I was walking on a medieval pilgrimage route that is known as the Camino de Santiago. If you've never heard of the Camino de Santiago, uh, like I said, it was a medieval pilgrimage route uh, that was popular among Christians all over Europe who would travel on foot from wherever they happened to live. Uh, to Santiago de Compostela to pay homage to the relics of Santiago or St. James in English. And it has become popular again in recent years uh, for many reasons. Many people do it for various reasons. Uh, when you do do it, you will get a piece of paper from uh, the church in Santiago de Compostela. So this is mine. Uh, you can see there's my name there, and it says that I did walk 799 kilometers starting from saint jean pierre de port uh, Now, I didn't do it so that I would get a piece of paper from the Catholic Church. I'm not Catholic. Uh, I'm actually not religious at all, but I did view this journey for myself as kind of a spiritual quest. Among other things, I was also very interested in the cultural aspects and the history of the towns and villages and cities that we passed along the way and of the Camino itself. So it was a fantastic experience. It's something that I've wanted to do for many years now and I'd say it even exceeded my expectations and my expectations were pretty high. Uh, but one thing that I got asked Many times along the way, when I when it came up that I was vegan, people would say, oh, what's it like being vegan on the Camino? It must be so hard. And in my experience, it honestly wasn't, was, was not, not difficult at all. It was actually really easy for me to be vegan on the Camino, and I discovered a huge abundance of vegan food, far more than what I had expected. But I know that not everyone shares that experience, and I did meet many other vegan pilgrims and vegetarian pilgrims on the Camino who were really struggling. And unfortunately, some of them went back to eating animal products that they wouldn't normally eat when they were at home. So I met some vegans who went back to eating eggs while they were on the Camino, and I also met at least one vegetarian who went back to eating fish while he was on the Camino because he just didn't know what else to eat while he was there. And uh, I don't want this to happen to anyone else because it really doesn't have to be that way. There is a huge abundance of vegan food uh, all along the Camino de Santiago and everywhere else in Spain, really. <clears throat> but if uh, you don't have the skills and the knowledge and the resources that you need to find it, then it can be very easy to miss it and it can make your life a lot more difficult. <clears throat> so I want to make this video really quickly uh, just to give you my top tips. I'm actually going to be giving you much, a lot more resources about the Camino and about being vegan on the Camino. And in fact, I, while I was walking, I recorded a video every single day of the 39 days that I was on the Camino uh, showing you what I eat in a day as a vegan on the Camino de Santiago. So I'll be putting those up a little bit later. I'm, right now I'm finishing up some other projects that I'm working on. I'm about to publish my first full-length book, Veggie Planet. Uh, and I can link that down below in case you're interested in that. That's really supposed to be my focus right now, but I just couldn't wait to get this out there for you. I couldn't stand the thought of this information not being out there available to anyone who wants to do the Camino as a vegan or as a vegetarian, or just at least once uh, to know how they can perhaps eat a few f fewer animals while they're on the Camino. So here are my six top tips for eating vegan deliciously on the Camino de Santiago. All right, tip number one, 
learn some key Spanish phrases. And this is the big stumbling block that trips up everyone who doesn't already speak Spanish. Uh, and of course, this doesn't just happen to vegans. I saw, I witnessed a, quite a few uh, kind of heated conversations and miscommunication in restaurants when people were trying to order food and um, yeah, just w it wasn't going well because they didn't share a language with the restaurant staff member that they were speaking to. So obviously you're not going to become fluent, um, you know, just a few days before your trip, but you don't need to be fluent in Spanish. All you need to know is the exact few phrases that are going to communicate your needs effectively. So I've actually put together a really simple one-page cheat sheet for you that will give you those key phrases that you're going to need to explain that you're vegan and what that means and to ask restaurant staff if they might be able to, to accommodate you. And so you can download that totally for free, and I will put that link down below as well. All right, uh, key tip number two is learn about Spanish cuisine. There are actually quite a few dishes in Spanish cuisine that are vegan by default. They just happen to be accidentally vegan. Um, and some others that are perhaps not always vegan, but they can easily be adapted just a little bit and be veganized just by asking to make a small adaptation. But you're not going to know that if you don't know something about these dishes and about Spanish cuisine in general because most of the time vegetarian uh, options are not marked on menus and vegan options it's even more rare for those to be marked on menus so you might see the names of these dishes but if you don't know those names if you don't know what that means then you're not going to know that that's actually a vegan option. So I've got you covered here too. Uh, you can check out my Ultimate Vegan Guide to Spain, which talks about all of these dishes that you will find uh, throughout Spain, including on the Camino de Santiago. So again, that link will be down below. All right, number three, veganize the pilgrim's menu. So, what is a pilgrim's menu? It's basically a set menu, usually three courses. So you have a first course, a second course, and a dessert. And then that also comes along with bread and some kind of drink. Usually you choose either wine or water. Sometimes you can choose beer or wine or water. And that will be for one single set price, usually about 10 euros. And that is a good deal, uh, considering that it would cost much more if you ordered all of those items individually a la carte. Now, uh, the second course is always going to be some kind of meat dish or fish dish. So most people assume that vegans and vegetarians can't have the pilgrim's menu. But that's not true at all, because all you have to do is say, instead of a second course, I would like to have two first courses. And the first courses very often are vegan or easily veganizable. At least some of them are. And usually the set menu is not just one option. They will give you several options within each course. So they may have five different choices for the first course and five different choices for the second course. And so you can just choose two of those five first courses and that can be your first course and second course. And then for dessert, you can always just ask for fresh fruit. And every restaurant has this. I've never been to a restaurant in Spain where they didn't have fresh fruit. Sometimes they might even have something a little more exciting. They might be able to make you a smoothie or at least some kind of fruit salad where you have different fruits uh, chopped up together and presented nicely, but if nothing else, they'll be able to give you actually a piece of fresh fruit. Uh, so you can definitely benefit from the Pilgrim's menu as a vegan, and that's something that's going to be offered to you all along the way throughout the Camino. So it's a good thing to know that that's not off limits. All right, now, number four, order paella, not pizza. And this is something that is very much specific to the Camino. Paella itself is not specific to the Camino. It's something that's common throughout Spain, particularly around Valencia. If you don't know what paella is, it's a rice dish and it's flavored with saffron, which gives it this nice yellow color. And then you can have lots of different things mixed in with the rice, depending on what kind of paella it happens to be. So often it's seafood, but it doesn't have to be. You can have a totally vegan and vegetarian paella, and those are usually called a paella de verduras, which means a vegetable paella. Now, on the Camino, 
there are lots of bars and cafes. Uh, I'm talking particularly about little small villages and, and small towns, but I saw this in some larger towns and even some cities as well. Uh, they don't really have the capacity to create their own homemade food, at least not in the large quantities uh, that are required to uh, feed all the pilgrims that are coming through. So what they do instead is they work with these companies that provide pre-prepared meals for them and they serve those. And there's a one company which is called Paella Dor, which makes these pre-prepared paellas. And there are they offer, I think, six or eight different kinds. One of them is a paella de verduras. And so you will see the paella dor sign outside bars and cafes and restaurants everywhere along the Camino. Maybe not every single village, but it's a very, very common sight. And whenever you see that, you'll know that you can get a vegan paella there. And so that's a really good kind of fallback option when you don't see anything else. You'll probably find a paella door uh, paella. Now, the pizza, on the other hand, it's the same story, right? A lot of these bars, uh, you will, again, become familiar with the signs, just like you'll recognize the paella door sign. You'll also recognize the pizza signs and sometimes pasta signs as well. So these are all pre-prepared dishes. And that means that the pizza and the pasta is not going to be vegan and you're not, I mean, they could have made a vegan pasta easily, but of the ones that I saw, these pre-prepared ones, they never were vegan and you're not going to be able to ask them to change it, for example, by leaving the cheese off of the pizza because that's not an option. It's already made and everything is all jumbled together. So if you see those signs, you can just forget about the pizza and the pasta, but you know that the paella is a vegan option. All right, number five, seek out vegetarian restaurants and albergues. Albergues, is, that's the Spanish word for hostel. Uh, so in this case, I'm talking about pilgrims hostels, which is where you're probably going to be staying most of the time when you're walking the Camino. Now, I knew that I would probably find some vegetarian restaurants in the larger cities because the Camino does pass through some cities like Leon and Burgos and Pamplona, Logroño as well. Uh, and so I did my research in Happy Cow. If you don't know Happy Cow, it's a fabulous directory of vegan, vegetarian, and veg-friendly restaurants all over the world. And so I knew going into this journey that, yes, there were going to be some vegetarian restaurants in those places. And I kind of expected that I would be looking forward to those and I would have this amazing vegetarian feast. And then the rest of the time, I would just kind of be surviving on whatever I could find. Not true. Actually, there are quite a few vegetarian albergues that only serve vegetarian food. And uh, usually their vegetarian options are actually vegan options. Um, dairy products are not really used all that much in Spain. So most of the vegetarian dishes are, in fact, vegan dishes. The, the dessert is the one thing that's usually not. And again, you can always order fruit. Um, so yeah, the, that was a huge surprise to me that actually there are quite a few vegetarian albergues and these were wonderful places. These were the places where I really felt the spirit of the Camino the most and I connected with some wonderful people there. So I got a lot more out of it than just a vegan meal and I highly recommend a stay in these places for anyone who's walking the Camino no matter what kind of diet you eat. Um, so there are too many to list actually, but I'll just name some of my favorites are the Albergue Verde, uh, El Beso, and El Cerval y la Luna. And if you want to find out about more of them, like I said, I am going to be creating more resources for you uh, so to really go into detail about what these places are like and what they serve. Uh, but for now, what you can do is check out uh, The Vegetarian Way, which is a free source, resource that's been created my, by my friend Jeff at Heart of the Camino. And so it's just a little one-page PDF download that uh, lists a lot of these vegetarian options along the Camino. Um, now, just be aware that Jeff currently doesn't have that many vegan options listed, but in my experience, there are a lot more. Uh, most, pretty much, if there's a vegetarian option, it's pretty much a guarantee that there's also a vegan option. And I'm going to be collaborating with Jeff and uh, helping him to update that as well so that that information can get out there. And like I said, 
be putting my own resources together too. But that is an excellent place to start uh, is the vegetarian way. So you can just go to heartofthecamino.com and you can download that for free. And you'll find out all about those vegetarian albergues. It's mostly the albergues, but there are some restaurants as well. All right, and finally, number six is to bring your own trail snacks. Now, I, for dinner, I was eating mostly either in the albergues or in restaurants, so I was eating out and not uh, cooking my own meals. You can cook your own meals if you prefer to. Many hostels will have kitchens, and so that's definitely a cheaper way to do it if you want to do the Camino on a tighter budget. Then you can cook for yourselves, and, and there's... Uh, always little grocery stores in the villages that will sell basics like pasta and chickpeas and other canned beans and fresh produce and things like that. So that is an option if you choose to do that, but just know that you don't have to. If you want to eat out every meal as a vegan, you can do that too. Um, now my personal preference was to eat out generally for dinner, but then to bring food along with me uh, when I was walking in the morning and the early afternoon. So I would have kind of a picnic lunch at around noon. And again, this is just what I prefer to do. There are plenty of other ways that you can do it. Uh, but bread and tomatoes would usually be kind of the basis of my picnic lunch. And then I would have whatever else was available. So maybe avocados, maybe uh, canned artichoke hearts, or you could also do canned uh, asparagus, white asparagus tips. Those are very common in Spain. Um, and then I would often find some kind of spread that I could put on the bread. Uh, vegetable pâtés you can get in health food stores, and you will pass by several health food stores along the Camino. But if you don't have anything like that, extra virgin olive oil works really well too, and uh, that is very widely available in Spain. Um, so that would be kind of my noonday meal, would be a picnic. Um, but then you can also bring lots of snacks, trail snacks, along with you as well. And there are all kinds of vegan trail snacks that are, again, available in every village that you're going to pass by. So I mean, just for a few examples, you've got nuts, you've got either fresh fruit or often dried fruit, um, different kinds of trail mixes, granola bars, dark chocolate bars, uh, cookies, the little kind of, they're called digestive biscuits usually in Europe, so they're not like total junk food cookies. They're usually made from oats and and they are pretty good, you know, energy food. So those are just a few examples of snacks that you can bring along the way. And I do recommend always having some food with you, just in case. I mean, again, I recommend that to anyone, vegan or not, because you never know if the bar in the next village is going to be closed or what's going to happen. So it's always good to have some food with you just as a backup. But in my experience, you don't need to carry around loads and loads of food because there is plenty of vegan food available on the Camino. So... There you have it, my six top tips. Like I said, I'm gonna be giving you lots more resources in the future, just as soon as I've finished with the launch of my book, Veggie Planet. But in the meantime, I think this is going to be enough to, to get you going. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions about the Camino. Uh, you can reach me at thenomadicvegan.com and uh, find the contact page there. I would love to talk about the Camino. I'm all like, <laughs> excited about the Camino right now and I would really love to share it with with you and I wanted to get this video out there straight away because I just couldn't stand the thought of other pilgrims starting out on their Camino and looking for this information and thinking that they weren't going to be able to find vegan food because it's just not true so don't worry you can totally be vegan on the Camino and it's an amazing experience and buen Camino